Mom, you need to back away. So, back in the day I worked for an armored car company. We serviced a lot of big box retail stores. I was on my usual route. This was the beginning of holiday shopping season. So all of the stores on my route were packed. I go in the front. Customer service manager waves and radios his manager that I'm here. It's a normal stop for me. I know where to go. On one side of the store was the office. That particular day I was both making a cash drop and pulling cash to take back. I stand outside the office and wait for the store manager to make her way over. So while I wait I pull out my scanner and start entering info and the like. About 30 seconds and I hear an irritated excuse me. Now for reference, I'm in a store where the employees wear red. I am in mostly black, as in black boots, polo, even still wearing my aviator sunglasses, and very obviously, a police-style duty belt with a large holster that very visibly contains a firearm, holding a sealed black bag with the company's name on it. I look up, and it's a middle-aged woman and I shit you not, she has the typical I want to speak to the manager haircut SM for suburban mom from here on out. This is the shorthand version, as this was a few years ago. I look up from my scanner at her. Me? Yes. SM. The ad said you had toy on sale today but I can't find any, can you check for me? Me. Sorry ma'am I can't help you, there should be an employee here somewhere. SM. Visibly irate what do you mean you can't help me? I shop here all the time and you can't be bothered to check for a toy for me, why do you even have that thing then? Me, ma'am I need you to calm down, I can't help you. SM, maximum over Russell fine, I'll do it myself then. She proceeds to try and grab my scanner. The second she makes her grab, I drop the bag in my right hand take a half step back, grab my pistol, and pop the serpa open. The holster has a piece of plastic that I have to depress in order for the top of the holster to pop forward. Allowing me to draw, it makes a noticeable noise. I half draw my pistol, the end of the barrel still just inside the holster, and put on my old army voice. Me, back up now. She quickly realizes that this has gone 0 to 100 very, very fast. She takes a few steps back, right as the manager appears. Manager, okay. What is happening? SM, pointing at me he w-o-u-l-d and help me and now he's threatening me. I'm calling the police? Why are you people carrying guns? I slid my pistol back in the holster and locked it. Manager, ma'am, he doesn't work here, he's a guard for the armored car service. Manager turns to me. Manager, what happened? Me, I told her I couldn't help her and she tried to take my scanner, broke the arms reach rule while I'm in possession of cash, and attempted to assault me, I'm within my row. Manager, ma'am I can call the police if you would like. But he does not work for us, also if you would like I can get an employee to help you. It dawns on this woman what she has done. SM, uh, yes, an employee would be helpful, and I'm sorry. The, no harm no foul ma'am. Everything else is uneventful, but man that was an intense 12 seconds. Story 2. Costco clerk in suit and tie. I was the owner of a computer repair shop, IT consulting firm and had a fairly busy day. I had a 3 hour meeting and site evaluation in the morning for a new contract. Then I had to pick up ingredients from Costco, especially since a few people who tried my family recipe for pasta sauce talked me into making it for 150 attendees of a charity event. And I was rushing as quickly as I can since I need to simmer the sauce for two hours dinner started in four hours. My Italian grandma's cooking made me hate ready to cook pasta sauce and I didn't want to be a letdown by reheating prego. My map was fairly linear, client's office Costco my house potluck. Since that particular Costco has long lines no matter when I go, I decided to kill two birds with one stone and get my groceries as well. Also, since the charity was more formal and time wasn't on my side, I didn't bother to change out of my suit. But I also made the mistake of jamming out in the aisles with a $250 set of Sennheiser Bluetooth headphones. As I pushed a fully loaded cart down the aisle and then stepped away for a moment, an older lady starts snatching stuff from my cart, and before I can even react, she yanked my headphones off my head. Oh well angrily you're on the clock, what the heck are you doing with these? Now, just a bit of a side note, I'm in it, so I'm used to dealing with clueless people in a professional matter. But some people can still catch me off guard every once in a while, especially when I'm off the clock. After gathering myself a bit, I replied, I, um, when was the last time you saw a stock clerk in suit and tie? I don't work here. Oh well in a confused yet smarmy and scolding tone you could be a supervisor of this store. I don't know. It's still very unprofessional for you to have headphones on during business hours. Me, but ma'am, I don't work here though. Even if I did, it's not your decision. Now please give me my headphones back. Oh well, no, I'm taking them to your higher-ups, and you could explain it to your boss and hopefully he'll give it back to you. 
thinking on my feet and not wanting to waste time getting the store manager involved. I then pulled out one of my business cards that reads, A Technologies, LLC. Your one-stop shop for technology and more. Ed Witkowski owner. Then I replied in a sarcastically compliant tone of voice and said, Okay, here, let me give you the owner's business card and you can call him. Now, most intelligent people would have taken the hint and see that it's not Costco. But then she whips out her $10 flip phone and starts dialing. And I prep by turning my phone's ringer all the way up. My phone starts ringing. I purposely wait 10 seconds while shoving my caller ID screen in her face and ensuring that she sees the caller ID coming from her phone, then pick up and say, thank you for calling the owner of AE at Consulting. Can the fellow Costco customer have his headphones and tomato sauce you took from his cart back? Then she angrily shoves my headphones back in my hands, then tosses the tomato sauce back in a way that manages to break one of the cans open, then storms off. Off the record from this point forward, to respond to a commenter, purists, I know that proper Italian says that pasta sauce is a ragu, but I don't want it to be confused with the brand of the ready-to-cook sauce ragu. Wish it wasn't so similarly named. I also can't call it marinara, bolognese or anything else since it's kind of a fusion of the two types of sauces. It's smooth like marinara, but bold and savory like a bolognese. Don't know if there's a special name to this kind of sauce. Name of business changed to initials, reads a bit better than redacted. Plus, after the company has been closed for five years, I don't think it makes a huge difference anymore. Also, that's not my legal last name because something something internet, and ID theft. But it is my great-grandfather's last name before he anglicized it to something more American-sounding. Edit my grammar has te dumb. Edit 2 decided to reformat the story a bit since someone is offering to add it to an audio reading. I just realized some parts were not exactly narrative-friendly. Story 3 it was just a bad outfit choice. Disclaimer that this is more of a he doesn't work here lady story. Please remove it if it doesn't fit. Also, I'm on mobile. I work at a ropes course outdoors so our uniform is a light blue t-shirt and khaki shorts. It can look like regular clothes especially because we don't have to tuck our shirt. But our shirts do have obnoxiously large graphics that say things like staff and ropes course operators so it shouldn't be hard to pick us out from the crowd. So anyway, it's the middle of summer and the ropes course is packed with kids and their screaming mothers. There's always an operator on the course to make sure no one is in trouble but we only keep one on there so we have enough people on the ground. So sometimes the operator is already busy helping someone else or just can't see everything all the time because there are 40 other people amount three stories. I'm on the ground with all the parents and there's the lady screaming up to their kid. Parents do this all the time and we usually let it go on for a bit before we intervene because it usually works itself out. After a bit one of us goes and checks on the, the lady who is still screaming and it's your typical case of the kid is scared and refusing to move. There isn't much we can do from the ground so we get the operator on the course's attention. He goes down and helps for a bit and then has to leave. The lady goes back to screaming. After a couple of minutes the little kid comes down off the course and the parent is furious. She's screaming at us now about how it's unbelievable that her child couldn't have complete one-on-one -on -one help and demands to know the names of the two men that stood around up there. That's when we stop. I've been standing here trying to get their attention for an hour 20 minutes max and neither of them will listen to me. There aren't two people up there and we can't commit to just one person, everyone needs to be watched. There are two people, look, one there and one guy over there. She then points to this middle-aged dad following around his kids wearing a light blue t-shirt and khakis. We tell her that that man doesn't work here, he is here with his family. This luckily flustered her enough that she didn't ask for the name of the other guy to report him. Not that my manager cares, we get these reports all too often. Story 4. Little old Asian ladies. I'm tall. For a human, 6 foot 5 and a little, bright red hair, translucent complexion. Got there pretty quick, too, at 6 by the time I was 13. This is slightly odd because my grandmother's from Tokyo. She's an amazing woman, hospitable and gentle and kind, the best grandmother a guy could ask for. As an example, she heard I wanted to see this new show coming out on Cartoon Network when I was a kid and made sure I was at her place and awake for the 11 p.m. premiere for Samurai Jack. Hours past my bedtime at home. She's retired and lives in a complex with a bunch of other little old Asian ladies the tallest came up to my shoulder line. They're all friends and frenemies, and I stay the hell away from their internal politics. You never want to mess with that, trust me. After I got to a certain height, my grandmother habitually took me shopping at one or another of the Japanese markets dotted around Southern California. Suddenly, I'm a status symbol, an asset and a huge help. 
she'd get three of her friends and we'd all pile into one or another of their vehicles, chattering amiably the whole time in a mix of broken English and Japanese, get to the market, and everyone but me grabbed a cart. We'd meander aisle to aisle, and I would be tasked to get the things on the top shelf, the ripest fruit out of reach, the heavy bags of rice that they didn't want to lift. We'd split into two groups at the checkout, and my grandmother would beam smiles all around the entire time. The lady that inevitably helps us always knew her already. Oh, Momoyo-chan, you brought him again, did he help you well? Of course, he's a good boy, always getting the things up high. This continued for years upon years until I moved out and away, and the memo must have gone out that I was now a free agent, because to this day I get asked by random little old Asian ladies to get stuff of the top shelf. At this point it's so ingrained in me, and it seems that every other time I go to any supermarket I get asked. That often I don't even wait for them to approach me. If I see someone staring at an item out of reach, I'll ask if they want me to get it for them. Maybe it's just my calling, 